So the GELF criteria is a series of criteria that were established many years ago to help us understand what groups of patients will most likely benefit from treatment and follicular lymphoma. There have been studies looking at patients with limited disease, low tumor burden disease, or high tumor burden disease, and those studies have taught us that patients with low tumor burden follicular lymphoma actually don't necessarily benefit from chemotherapy versus uh, observation or rituximab versus observation. What those studies have taught us is that if they have high tumor burden disease, they're much more likely to benefit from chemotherapy. And so the GELF criteria tells us that if a patient has a large burden of disease, seven centimeters, or if they have three lymph nodes that are greater than three centimeters, or if they have cytopenias or several other factors, then that patient is more likely to suffer symptoms from follicular lymphoma, they're more likely to have morbidity from follicular lymphoma, and they're most likely to benefit from treating their follicular lymphoma. So in that capacity, that is not really a prognostic tool, but it's rather kind of a, a parameter or a tool that we use to say, do they meet these certain criteria, and are they in the group of patients that will most likely benefit from treatment? So PET is actually considered a standard of care in terms of staging. The Lugano criteria has demonstrated to us that follicular lymphoma is FTG avid, so that means that it does take up that flur fluoroxy uh, deoxygenated glucose. It does light up on the PET. So it helps the oncologist to differentiate stage much more accurately than with a, PET, with, with, a, with a CT scan. And that's already been very well established and is considered a standard of care in the NCCN guidelines and our, in our staging criteria. In terms of following patients over time, I think that that is still a little bit less well known because we, we don't do surveillance with PET after a patient's been treated. That's not considered a standard. In fact, a lot of our guidelines from ASH and ASCO suggest that we should do less surveillance for patients in whom there's no clear benefit to surveillance. So I think that for patients with untreated follicular lymphoma, if you're suspecting that something has evolved, if you're suspecting that they have transformation, then the use of a PET may have may help you in terms of guiding your treatment selection or maybe rebiopsying. But in terms of just regular surveillance, getting a PET scan done every six to 12 months, there's not a, a, a lot of utility in that. So if they have low tumor burden disease, then you can offer rituximab as a single agent. You can also observe the patient. I think that that is a very long discussion typically with your consult because a lot goes into that. If a patient has low tumor burden disease, um, yet they are symptomatic, that would be an indication to treat. They could be symptomatic because they have pain, they have anxiety regarding their diagnosis, or they have some other symptom or some other issue regarding the diagnosis. But um, for patients with high tumor burden disease, some of those patients don't get treated because despite having more disease burden, they actually feel great. They don't really desire treatment, they want to delay treatment, so I think that it really depends on the individual. If you find that your patient has impending organ failure or within a certain period of time you worry that they will have a, some kind of morbidity from delaying treatment, then that would be someone that I'd act upon sooner. But if someone has just several lymph nodes in their chest, in their abdomen and pelvis, and they don't have any other compelling reason outside of, say, size, for example, you may easily delay treatment for that patient without a lot of com compromise, I don't think. Now, if you suspect that someone is going to be is transforming to an aggressive lymphoma, that's something that really shouldn't should be expedited, and you shouldn't delay treating somebody in whom you suspect that that's happening. If they have cytopenias because they have bone marrow failure due to the presence of lymphoma in their bone marrow, a very high amount, that would be something that over time, if they may become transfusion dependent, or they might develop anemia from which they're very tired, or they have shortness of breath, that's also something that would trigger treatment. So the presence of a pleural effusion again would be something that technically would warrant treatment, but you have some patients that have asymptomatic pleural effusions that they don't, they're not aware of, but that if, and if that's the only, the only site of disease, although that would be less likely, that would be another reason to initiate treatment.